Welcome back to my video series where I'm baking something for some of the Greek gods and goddesses. This time we're baking for the god of the sea, Poseidon. Poseidon is the brother of Zeus and Hades and it was believed that when Zeus overthrew Cronus, each of them draw lots to determine who would rule which realm, the sky, the sea and the underworld. So Poseidon got the sea and is therefore the god of basically everything water related. The sea, dolphins, but also storms and earthquakes, and apparently also horses? Uh, okay, good for you Poseidon. Being the god of the sea, he is the protector of seafarers and was worshipped a lot in ancient Greece because of its dependency on seafaring as one of the most important ways of trade. Probably his most iconic symbol is the trident, which he was said to use to create storms, earthquakes and shipwrecks when angered. So because the things associated with Poseidon are pretty much all in one spectrum of things being water and sea related, I was kind of afraid that the cake I would make would turn out to be a bit too plain or obvious. Because of course the cake just had to be blue and to be honest there wasn't that much that came to my mind regarding some kind of vegan seafood that would make sense on a cake, you know? But in the end I think I was able to add some layers to my idea. So let's look at the sketches. Sticking with the sea theme, I wanted to add a crust that would be more on the crumblier side. So it could represent some sort of seashore or sand consistency. Then of course the cake needed to be blue and thinking about it, I would achieve that blue color with blue spirulina again. So that would actually make perfect sense because spirulina is a type of algae. So here we are, sea themed. For decorations, I thought maybe some blue colored vegan chocolate drips here and there and maybe even some type of chocolate crunchies to portray rough stones, earthquakes or maybe even waves and foam. Then blueberries, of course, since they're blue. And also I needed some fruit to balance out the flavors a bit. So I thought about a dark blueberry sauce, but I wasn't all too sure about that either. <laughs> and then I thought, how could I throw Poseidon's little trident in there somehow? I was thinking maybe some sort of spiridina swirls on the cake or maybe I would place the blueberries in some sort of trident shape, but I wasn't all too convinced with both ideas. And yes, so that were basically my ideas. Now let's see how it all turned out, shall we? You want to start making the cake the day before, and the first thing to do is prepare the crust. For that, you'll want to blend 300 grams of nuts of your choice. I used almonds and hazelnuts together with 80 grams of oats. A generous pinch of salt, I used sea salt here, of course, <laughs> and a pinch of vanilla in a food processor. Then transfer to a bowl, add 100 grams of melted coconut oil, as well as 60 grams of maple syrup, and mix everything together until you get a crumbly kind of dough. Line and grease a small cake tin with some of the leftover coconut oil and add the dough, pressing it to the bottom and up the sides to create the crust. I then decided to bake the crust for about 5 to 6 minutes at 175 degrees Celsius. So that step is totally optional. If you have any leftover dough, you can bake it separately and use for decoration later or it also makes a really nice granola, by the way. Now we're preparing the cream cheese filling. For that, add 300 grams of cashews to a pot and let them either soak in water overnight or cook for at least 15 minutes. Quick checkup on the crust. If you baked it, let it cool completely before making your cheesecake filling. For the filling, add your soaked or cooked cooled down cashews to a blender along with the juice of a lemon a generous pinch of vanilla, 300 grams of vegan cream cheese, 100 grams of liquid sweetener, 
and a pinch of salt. Then blend it up until smooth. Oh, and make sure to not overfill your blender. Mine really had a hard time here. <laughs> when everything is smooth, add 30 grams of melted coconut oil and our blue magic ingredient, spirulina powder. I used something between a half to a teaspoon, but you can actually add however much or little you want, depending on the color you want to achieve. Then add the filling to your cooled crust. I also left about half of the filling a bit lighter in color, so I'd get a bit of a irregular marbled kind of look. But you can also add some more spirulina powder on top and then swirl a knife through it, and then you get a similar marble effect. And that is our filling done. Now place the cake in the fridge and prepare the blueberry sauce. For that you want to add frozen blueberries to a saucepan and dissolve one teaspoon of cornstarch in about a third of a glass or cup of cold water. Add it to the blueberries along with however much sweetener you like and cook the mix up on medium heat until the berries have broken down and everything starts to thicken. Give it a quick blend and place into the fridge as well. I then made the white chocolate crunchies by melting vegan white chocolate with some coconut oil and then stirring in some corn flakes, some of the leftover crust and some coconut flakes. Then you want to place teaspoon by teaspoon of the mix on some parchment paper and set into the fridge as well. Now, on the next day, I tried to color the blueberry sauce a bit more blue using some of the spirulina, but to be honest, it didn't really work out without it affecting the taste too much. So I just tried to make the sauce as less purple and as dark as possible by adding a lot of cocoa powder. But you can actually skip all this, as it doesn't really make a visual difference. Now, for the slightly scary part, take your cake out of the fridge and remove the cake tin using a knife, hope, and a lot of positive self-talk for help. No, actually it wasn't that bad because we greased the pan with coconut oil before, but still, this part is always a bit scary. Transfer carefully to a plate and start decorating. I ended up using some of the leftover crust for a beachy kind of look and then decided to just go for it and try to make a trident shape out of blueberries, which worked okay, I guess. <laughs> I also made some of the vegan white chocolate drips and then realized that I had absolutely no space left for the crunchies, so I switched to just coconut flakes instead. I then added some more crust crumbles and of course, my favorite decorating ingredient, edible gold glitter. Oh wow, so satisfying. And that's basically it you guys, that's Poseidon's cake. Now let's have ourselves a slice. The texture turned out so good, it was unbelievable creamy and the marbled effect really made it look like waves, I think. So I was so happy with the result. I really didn't think it would turn out so cute, but damn, that cake was good. I then also added some of the blueberry sauce and flavor wise, that even was another upgrade right there. If you want, you can also add the chalk crunchies individually on each slice. Also a very nice touch. Love me an extra bit of crunch here. And yeah, that was it you guys. I hope you had fun watching this video. And now here goes some chaotic little taste test. Blue lips included. Okay, see you next time. Bye.